So, the Play Blast. The Play Blast is used by all animators everywhere because it's the only way for you to, after you wanna demonstrate your work or showcase your work to anybody, you render a video and you send it to somebody and they get to see it. Now, the Play Blast, at least in Maya, is a love and hate relationship because it's kinda clunky and the file sizes are huge, right? And it doesn't really give you any options to uh, customize your Play Blast. So into this video, I would like to chat to you guys exactly about this Play Blast and how to make it better. There's a plugin by Zurbrick that will make your life much easier and it will give you files that look better, that are smaller, that you can share easier and basically brings the Play Blast to the, the level and the efficiency that you need as an animator working either, you know, uh, as a professional or if you actually just working from your bedroom. Either way, this is going to be very useful and this is how the end result looks with the UI. You can add logos, you can add text, you can add a bunch of stuff on top of this Play Blast in order to customize it, make it your own and make sure that you look as professional as possible. So without further ado, let's get to it and let me show you how this awesome plugin works and how we will make your job much easier going forward. Let's do it. Okay, so um, here's the uh, the scene that I have, just a blockout scene of, of an animation that I've been wanting to tackle for many years, but I haven't been able to. If you've been following the channel for a bit, you know exactly what I'm about. But either way, this is a block out of a scene and this kind of serves as a good example on how to play blast things. Now, I'm just gonna talk about the negatives of play blasting because it's been the same thing, the same way for many, many years. And what happens is as follows. Uh, practically, while you're animating, while you're setting keys, while you actually want to preview animations, you normally go right click play blast, right? Now, before you do any of that, uh, you normally have to go into settings, which is this little uh, square here, and then change your settings to make sure that is that is like a file that you can work with that is not as heavy. Because by default, um, independently of the format that you choose here and the encoding and the quality, normally the files have a tendency to be quite big. Now, after this point, you just have to either press play blast or apply if you change your settings here. So then you'll actually do something like this and you'll play blast your scene. So this is what you do normally. You would actually have to go to your viewport uh, in your view settings and then add uh, elements to your viewport to be able to see the camera, um, what, how many frames or what frames are you at, so it displays the timeline, really useful for when people want to review your shots, uh, frame rate, something very useful for gameplay, all of that can be displayed in your viewport and then you play blast again so you can see everything. Now, this is kind of antiquated, and I think it's because um, uh, this has, there haven't been any changes for the Play Blast for many years now, and I do think they are overdue at this point. However, there's this plugin that you guys can use, and it's a paid plugin, but I do think that you should, guys should definitely um, support the developers and the people behind these things because they help us immensely. And the creator of this is Chris Zurbrig. Chris Zurbrig is super famous in the uh, animation community because he's been giving us a lot of amazing plugins over the years. Most renowned is the Keyframe MP player since the QuickTime 7 player when I used to animate way back in the day used to be the player to go to. Chris actually kind of made an even better version with Keyframe MP, which is a player for all animators. And I kind of swear by it, and there's no going back after you use Keyframe MP. Now, Chris has uh, developed a bunch of other plugins, and one of those is this, the Play Blast. So, you pay about $35 for the plugin. The plugin is really, really uh, powerful, and uh, you install it, and you have to install both the plugin by going into your uh, settings, and then going into your plugin manager. And then once you actually drop it in your folder, um, you should find a Zerbrig, a Zerbrig Advanced Play Blast. So this should be loaded and this is the path where you need to add the plugin to. Um, and then after you add that, there's a couple of scripts that you need to drop on your Maya folder and your Maya 2022 in this case, uh, scripts folder. And then once those two are set up, 
you are ready to go. Now you have to action your script. Once you do and you put it in your, on your uh, sh uh, shelf, then at that point, you get this fella right here, uh, Zubrick Advanced Play Blast UI. Now, this is kind of like self-explanatory and I think Zubrick did a really good uh, job of explaining exactly how many things can you change. But one of the first things you should do when you start using this plugin is basically click here because it will give you a preview of what your shot mask is going to look like, right? So this is incredibly important. Um, now you can actually, this name here, keep EP blocking is basically my file name. So it takes my file name right here on top, keep EP blocking, puts it here, which is really, really useful. You can also change the camera that you're using. So if you want to use something else, uh, you will actually use that camera. Or if you actually want to use the active camera, in my case, you will just take that camera and play blaster from there, just like Maya would. But just know that unlike uh, the native pl uh, play blast plugin from Maya, you can actually change your cameras right here, so you can have different angles, which is really really cool. Um, you can change the resolution of the render right here, so you can make it like super high quality or lower quality if you want. You also have presets that help you a lot, so you can have like a super low quality or a super high quality in order to actually kind of like get it to look as good as possible. You can change your frame rate, so frame rate it is not really clamped at this if you like, so in this case I changed my time range to be within these two uh, numbers right here. And it took the uh, numbers to the playback, but you can actually change your frame range uh, to be something bigger. Um, you can change your encoding and you can change your H24. Now, before you actually go any further, you need to go into settings and you can actually add your FFmpeg path. Now, this is important step because you need to kind of have this little um, executable, FFmpeg executable, in order to get the um, plugin to work accordingly. Otherwise, it's not going to play blast anything. And this is the same thing for Keyframe MP Pro. Whenever you want to export files, you need to have the FM, uh, FFmpeg. And you basically just source it, just go here, and then you find where this FMpeg and you find where this FFmpeg uh, executable is and then select it, open it, and then you will go into this, right? Now, another thing that I did is basically add a logo and this is really cool. So the reason why you see on the top right, my logo right here is because I just went and selected the logo that I have and uh, is an MPEG, so it's a transparent image, and you can add your logo to here. So it ne doesn't necessarily need to be a logo. This can be your name or something snazzy that you have, something that looks really good. So you can add it to this. So this is basically what you have to set up and you're ready to go. Now notice at this point, if I actually just play blast it, you will get the regular play blast, but now with an overlay. I'm just gonna cancel it so you guys can see, so it doesn't have to go through the whole thing. But as you can see here, my player opened, and then I can see my play blast like looking all snazzy and looking good. Um, now, there's a few more things that you have, you can change, and you can basically change what uh, it's displayed on your shot mask right here. Um, and this is really interesting because, for example, um, on the bottom left, I actually added my name, but you can actually add under brackets different things. So, for example, if I want to add to the bottom center the camera that I'm using, I'll just go uh, camera just like the ones above and you'll see that it basically picks up on the camera that I'm using and puts the name right there. Alternatively, I can just type it. I can just say camera one and that it will show up there, which is great. So you basically, for anything that is basically information that is coming from Maya, you kind of have to add it like, like this, but uh, for anything that is gonna be static, you can just write it down and it looks good. Now, another thing that I really like is also that you can change the font. So you can change the font to actually look anything different. So let me just get into this font because I like it. And as soon as I change it, it updates and it looks different. Um, you can change the color of your mask as well. So by default, it's black. I changed it to be a little bit bluish because I like it. You know, I think it's better, but you can add any color that you want. Looks good 
awesome. So the scale is another important one because you can actually make the, the bars bigger or smaller depending on your animation. So if you have a lot to display on your screen, you can just get one and that actually basically takes very little space. If you want something bigger, you can go up to two and have it like super legit and blocked out so you can read it properly. Now I went for 1.5 because I think it's like a nice in between and in that, that, that looks good. Um, now the frame padding is how many numbers do you want displayed? So if you have like a thousand, a thousand frame long animation, you can add that. In my case, it's actually just three digits, so I can just go ahead and just add three, and then basically can count everything else that I have up to two, 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 which is my animation. Now, this is basically all the settings that you have in order to make this look good. Now, the best thing about this is that you can uh, basically now leave the settings by default, work on your shot, and every time you wanna show your shot to either your lead or to be reviewed, or if you are a freelancer, you can just add your name to it. Um, you can actually showcase this to your um, employee or company that is actually hiring to freelance and is, go is going to look going to make you look so much more uh, professional because of how you actually play blast and the best thing is when you actually play blast the whole shot um, and you finish play, bla play, play blasting right so i'm just going to like let this um, do the whole thing this time okay so now i have the whole shot it's looking good as i want it with the settings that i want and I'm happy with my blocking, right? So I'm ready to show it to, you know, either my client or my lead or whoever. Now, this shot, because of FFmpeg, because it's H.264, it's already in a very small format. So if I am actually were to save this, so in this case, I'm using KFMMP, but you can use any player that you want. So if I actually were to export this, you'll actually be a very tiny format. So you can basically save this and send it straight away to whoever you actually need to send it to without without having to um, having to re-encode it or use a handbrake to make the file smaller or anything like that because no one likes big play blasts right so um, yeah that is pretty much all I had to show you on this awesome plugin by Zurbrick called advanced play blast it is indeed advanced and it will help you to look good and you will make your life a little bit easier as you go through your animations and that's all i had for this episode now if this was useful to you and you enjoyed it consider subscribing down below hit the bell button if you do so you don't miss any more of my plugins um, tips and tricks and things that i can show you to hopefully make your life easier as an animator and cannot forget to sh shout out my all my patreons everybody that has been helping me and if you like to help me further in my youtube channel in my journey to share my knowledge with all of you then consider joining me in patreon lots of perks lots of videos lots of behind the scenes and that's all i had for you guys I hope you guys have a great rest of the week and until then, stay well, stay safe, peace.